Hey, Marine and Wildlife. So let's go through wildlife disease. In this section, we're going to look at, you know, causes, concerns, human impacts of it all, and then you're going to be looking up some disease types. So the concept of a wildlife disease is any disturbance in the normal function or structure of an animal. So there's lots of things that cause disease, right? And they just became this continuous source of toxin. But over time, population build up immunity and now they don't experience that same problem. So, but at first you can't wipe out the whole population huh, to build up immunity. I don't even know what bot fly, like holes in it. Um, the larvae kind of like work its way out of these things. Nobody wants to eat that squirrel, okay? Like not really. Um, hunters don't want diseased organisms to eat. Um, so they start to get concerned and want to do something about it. Um, as you can see, like they were just discarding, they were hunting the squirrels, but then they were discarding them because they did not want it. So we had to change the hunting season so that these um, bot flies had already kind of hatched and left. Um, very cyclic and seasonal organisms, bot flies. Horses can get them. Almost deer, any um, fur animal can get these bot fly. Um, they lay the eggs on the fur, the, the organism grooms and ingests it. And But like I said, they literally kind of come out either of the waste or like in wounds and holes and yuck. So, um, Obviously disease controls, you know, a population size at times. So it's a pretty obvious, you know, can disease regulate wildlife populations? Well, most definitely. Um, but it has varying impacts, pardon me. Um, the Tasmanian devil population uh, greatly reduced when they had like this tumor disease affect them. Um, and they couldn't eat. And if you can't eat, then you don't survive. So. These little critters are just cute. Um, infectious disease does generally self-regulate in uh, wildlife. It doesn't benefit the host to kill everybody off, uh, right? It, then there's nothing new for it to infect. So we have had times where we need to like slow down our hunting and let the disease kind of run its course. Um, but we also still try to track like mortality rate in a population when it's not from hunting. And that's really important for us to figure out natural occurrences in a population. Um, so when we're looking at mortality, there's compensatory mortality. When we're looking at those life tables, right, of species, we have to recognize that there's hunted and non-hunted uh, mortality rates and sometimes they're similar and sometimes they're not. This suggests that um, natural mortality is, is kind of supposed to be there. Like sometimes things die of sickness because they were old and weak and ready to die. So we are still trying to build up our knowledge on a lot of different species of what causes them to die uh, and when. So we have tried some things unintentionally and intentionally that have been unsuccessful when it comes to regulating disease. Okay. Uh, Australia, as you know, is a very unique location. Rabbits had been introduced there. Um, I, we're not still totally sure if it was totally intentionally or unintentionally, uh, but they have no real predator there. They're very invasive species in Australia. And so they were working to remove and control rabbit populations. But that disease that they were working on actually got loose into the population before they were ready from flies. And they did see a huge reduction in rabbit population until the rabbit population became resistant. And then it just took right off again. Uh, we've tried vaccinating, like through injections, vaccinating wild organisms. Believe me, it, it wasn't successful either. You just can't get enough of them to create a herd immunity. Um, 
we know that wildlife populations carry diseases that can affect us. Lyme's disease, rabies, um, sylvatic plague, which is caused the bubonic plague. Okay? Um, rabbit fever. Uh, we know there's transmittable spongopathy. There we go, encephalopathy. Words today. Um, and they cause West Nile, uh, different types, but West Nile and mad cow disease. Uh, which are just impacts on the brain, swellings in the brain um, caused by this spongiforms that most definitely can get into humans. So what do we try and do when we manage them? Well, um, it's, it's really a, a balancing act of when should we let a sick organism die? When shouldn't we, right? Um, and disease is different in all different species. Okay. And does it do these species interact with our domestic livestock? Do they interact with humans? Can they serve as vectors to get this disease to humans? Uh, these are all kinds of things we consider. Is this disease affecting a population that's kind of small and threatened and endangered, where we could basically wipe them out if we didn't do something? Um, you know, recognizing that. Generally, most parasites have little effect on their host because they need their host to stay alive for them to be alive. Okay. So we're always motivated to save things based on our own values and beliefs, and they definitely come into, co into consideration when it's, should we save an animal? Does it have um, you know, value to us? And we see those values projected into policy and um, human acceptance and professional opinion in um, all of our society on whether or not we should intervene or not. Okay. Um, so we're constantly kind of trying to balance the uh, should we do something, should we not? And some of that background in it is what causes this disease in wildlife to begin with? And if it's something maybe we did, that's where we seem to see even more interest in doing something to fix it. Um, if if it's going to have, even if we didn't cause this infection, it's going to have a big impact on our food supply, you know, we might then do something. Okay. So that's why it's like, okay, we have an infection. Why are we concerned about this infection? What's its impacts? Let's make a management plan in action, right? Then uh, what you see is some diseases. Uh, this one we've now learned and recognized that, you know, colder weather kind of kills off these midges that cause this infection. Okay. Um, chronic wasting disease. Uh, the Atlantic brands have had an avian disease. Like these are some things that we're going to start to look into. We're going to now be looking at your own choice in a uh, disease. Of wildlife, so you're going to choose a disease and then talk about the wildlife that it impacts, the management policies and plans that have been put into place in various areas.